Thank you, Zimbabwe, for tuning in to yet another informative edition of your program. This is Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness, and I am Wazanai Manyore. So this is a platform which we specifically created for our farming community here in Zimbabwe. We created with the main objective of equipping each other with good agronomic practices, business ideas, business finance, business principles and ethics, and their application in the agricultural industry right here in Zimbabwe. Now, in this particular episode, we are going to be focusing on sweet potato production. I understand that it is also even our government's thrust through the Ministry of Lands, Agriculture, Fisheries, Water and Rural Resettlement. They are encouraging the production of sweet potatoes so that we deal with issues in our economy such as food insecurity, export growth, import substitution and even unemployment of the youth. To discuss this and more, I am joined by Augustine Masewura. He is uh, working with SECs right here in Zimbabwe. Augustine, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Anthony. Welcome. Yes. As we get into our discussion, can we talk about maybe the varieties of sweet potatoes that are available at the moment, those that you can cite, including the one that we are standing in uh, right now today? Yeah, we've got quite a lot of varieties in Zimbabwe. Um, we've got uh, Bronda, um, we've got uh, German too, we've got um, uh, Shingova, we also have uh, um, Birogat, that's uh, yellow fresh varieties. And uh, on, on Bronda and Chingova and uh, German 2, they are all white varieties. Okay. Uh, red skinned. Okay. And uh, German 2, Chingova, they are red. Then the um, uh, Chingo, uh, Chingo, uh, German 2 and Birogat, they are red skinned. And uh, where white skinned is on uh, uh, Chingova, white inside and red inside. Okay. But they, they differ on the characteristics on how they grow and also on how they perform in the fields. Okay. Yeah. Now, Augustine, can we talk about establishment of such a field, a sweet potato field? What does it take? What are, what are the prerequisites for a farmer to establish this crop? This is a very beautiful crop, weed-free, it looks healthy. What does it take for a farmer to establish this type of a crop? All right. Um, uh, sweet potato is not an expensive crop. Uh, you need uh, roughly in terms of figures. We're looking around about uh, four to five thousand to establish about a hectare. Okay. And um, also, the most important thing is to know a way to get your planting material. You, uh, we encourage farmers to use uh, various limited uh, planting material uh, from reputable seed houses. That's the very important keynote. And also, um, as we always say, uh, a crop doctor is the farmer. Yes. Everything starts with the farmer. Yes. So um, the farmer is the one who spends most of his time with the, with the crop. So to start well, you need to begin with a good seed. And also, um, you're looking at uh, a hectare, we're looking at about uh, four to five thousand. Then uh, you also need to gather all your, your, your inputs like uh, chemicals, which, are, which includes fungicides and uh, uh, pesticides. There are a lot of pesticides that uh, attack sweet potatoes. Okay. Uh, you need to be very careful, especially on the uh, weevil. Sweet potato weevil is, the, is one of the major pests that attack uh, sweet potato. Okay. So failure to control that, everything will be a waste of time. Okay. Sure. Before we move on to the climatic conditions or the necessary conditions for this crop to thrive, can we maybe talk about pongwe? I understand okay. that a lot of farmers here in Zimbabwe, they right. are having problems with Pongwe being a nuisance in yeah. every sweet potato production establishment. Right. Uh, Pongwe, that's the weevil that I've mentioned. Okay. Yeah, that's the sweet potato weevil. Okay. Yeah, there are some pesticides that, we, that are locally available. There's um, um, uh, Diazinone, is one of the major uh, Pongwe control in sweet potato. There's also Avant, it's one of the expensive uh, pesticides. But you can do without avant using the uh, the 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 the, the diazin one. Okay. And also you can use chlorpyrifos. So the most important thing is like you need to dip all your sweet potato into um, pongwe control, which is the weevil control. Yes. You can dip them into diazin one before taking them to the field. Maybe a few hours, say about two hours, before taking them to the field. Then after that, you need to also to have some routine sprays, like on a weekly basis or every fortnight to spray against pongwe and other pests. It's not only, it's not only, only pongwe which is a nuisance sweet potato. We also have sweet potato honeyworm. Pongwe actually affects the yield 
and also the quality of the, of the tuber. Okay, before we run on uh, to the diseases or the pests mm. that are nuisance in uh, sweet potato production, can we maybe talk about the sources or the origins of these vines? You know, if you are going to be taking agriculture as a business, mm -hmm. if we are going to address issues our, in our economy, looking at, uh, you know, our United Nations Agenda Vision 2030, we have SDG talking of uh, poverty alleviation, eradication of hunger. If you are going to adopt agriculture as a business, the sources of your inputs become pertinent, become mm -hmm. critical. What are the sources or the origins of these vines? Right. Um, um, it's like everything starts from the lab. Yes. Uh, the crop that you're looking here actually start, started from the lab. The source of the material is the lab. Is, is the lab. We, it's like the, it goes through the lab uh, well, through a process called virus elimination. Then from there it comes to the, to the nursery. The nursery applies the material then to the farmer under uh, good conditions. Okay. Then from, 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 from the farmer then to other farmers. So we encourage farmers not to keep on repeating the same material for probably three years. Or borrowing from yeah, your borrowing neighbor. Yeah, borrowing from your neighbor. As you know that there are some varieties and the planting material that we, we have seen since we were grown. <laughs> yes. You know, that's I you know, long back. People are still using those. One, it also affects, if you keep on using the same material for more than three years, it affects your yield. You end up getting small, small tubers or your yield goes lower. Yes, sure. and the, uh, uh, just to add on that, this is where some of our Zimbabwean <coughs> farmers have a love-hate relationship with agriculture. They are saying a sweet, a sweet potato production is not even a profitable venture, and yet it is, sure. which is why we are emphasizing on getting your vines from a reputable source. Mm -hmm. As we round off this segment, uh, Augustine, can we talk about good agronomic pro uh, practices in sweet potato production, just briefly? Right. Um First of all, you need to do a, a, a proper, a good uh, land preparation. Uh, it starts with a good land preparation. So there are some quick checklists that I need to play out uh, 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 with you right now. It's like you need to plow your field. You plow deeply your field, say at least 30, 40 centimeters deep, to bury all the, 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 the residues of the previous crop. Then, um, and also suppressing the diseases or the care of diseases because you don't need to you know to keep on carrying over the diseases but if year you plow it back yeah out. yeah in, in, year in and year out you need to plow at least uh, 30 to 40 centimeters deep so that uh, you bury all the leftovers from other crop okay. from the previous crop okay so it's like you, you know once you've done that you need to disc your field um, and also prepare a fine tooth for for good uh, for good soil preparation before transplanting or planting the sweet potato. Okay. Then you make up the ridges using a ridger. Uh, say at least uh, your plant spacing will be around uh, uh, 80 to 90 centimeters apart between lines. Then between plants around 25 to 30 centimeters apart. Then after that you also need to look at your irrigation pattern or system. You can do sweet potato through rain fed. You can do sweet potato through uh, the irrigation, irrigation. Okay. but uh, as, as I said, sweet potato is a, it's a drought resistant crop. It requires a good moisture for, uh, in the first six weeks of its growth. After that, then it can support itself. Okay, sure. thank you so much, Augustine. On that note, our viewers, sweet potato is a very cost-effective crop to produce. It can sustain itself. We are going to go on a short commercial break. We'll be right back with this and more in the second segment of your program. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back viewers, we are in the second segment of your program, Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness, where we are talking about sweet potato production in Zimbabwe. Now viewers, we encourage you to be a part of these conversations. Feel free to get in touch with the producer, Wadzanae Manure, on 0772-807-506. Alternatively, you can like our Facebook page, Agribusiness with Wadzanae. You can make a follow-up on this episode and more on our YouTube channel, that is Agribusiness with Wadzanae. We are also now available on Twitter. And our Twitter handle there is at agribusiness110. Now, earlier on before we went to the break, Augustine here was telling us that sweet potato is a drought-resistant crop. It can sustain itself given that the first six weeks of production are good, given, are talking about moisture. Augustine, before we went to the break, we were talking about good agronomic practices. Taking from there, can you even uh, uh, emphasize on soil requirements? 
that are suitable for sweet potato production. Yeah, thank you, Wadze. Um, sweet potato requires um, sandloom soil. Sandloom is one of the best soil for any crop. Okay. The best thing is like you need to put your crop on the best soil. So you can do sweet potato on any soil, depending on how you support the crop. So if you use sandy soil and other uh, soil with uh, less vigor, then it means you need to use more fertilizer. So basically, um, the requirements uh, on fertilizer for sweet potato, we're looking at about 400 k three to 400 kgs of compound D. Then you can also mix that with uh, 200 kgs of uh, single superphosphate, or you can do without this single superphosphate. Then you also need to use uh, the gypsum. Okay. It supports the growth of the, of the tuber as well and also builds the quality. From soil requirements that are suitable for sweet potato production, fertilizer application becomes pertinent. Mm -hmm. We are here at Agribusiness where we are talking about business fundamentals and their application in agriculture. There can be issues surrounding diseconomies of scale or economies of scale, mm -hmm. whereby a farmer can over apply fertilizer mm -hmm. or under apply fertilizer. Mm -hmm. When they over apply, they will be having this in mind saying that this is how I can maximize on yield. I can get high yields if I put more fertilizer. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about fertilizer application in their regimen. Right, good, uh, very good. Uh, it's a good question anyway. Um, what the, you know, sweet potato doesn't, lead, doesn't need a concentrated fertilizer application. Okay. So um, the best application uh, on fertilizer, on, on sweet potato fertilizer, is like you need to broadcast it before making any ridges. Okay. So first of all, you, you, pl you plow your field, you disc, then after disking, you need to broadcast it. With what type of a fertilizer? Yeah, with compound D okay. mixed with uh, uh, SSP. Okay. Which is single, single superphosphate. Or you can use even double superphosphate with okay. reduced amount. Then um, you, you broadcast it evenly on, on the land that you want to use. Then you can use it, you can do hand broadcast, broadcasting or you can use a tractor vacuum, a calibrated to suit your requirements per okay. hectare. Okay. Sure. Okay. Uh, speaking of weed and pest control, earlier on in the first segment, we touched briefly on Pongwe, mm -hmm. the sweet potato weevil. Going deeper now in this segment, we have pests, weeds, diseases mm -hmm. that are a nuisance <coughs> when it comes to sweet potato mm -hmm. production. Can you maybe enlighten our viewers there at home? I understand that some of them are taking notes mm -hmm. and when it comes to sweet potato mm -hmm. production. Mm -hmm. When it comes to weed, diseases and pest control, mm -hmm. what does it take, uh, the requirements? Right. Um, you need to have a, a backpack knapsack. That's the most important thing. So that you can use that one to do the, your, your sprays routine every week or you know, a certain period. Then you also need um, the, the chemicals, the pesticide, the fungicide. Uh, I've mentioned uh, diazinone is one of those uh, uh, pesticides. And you can use even acephate is also good uh, to control the uh, uh, hornworm. That is a nuisance. The hornworm doesn't affect the yield. It just chews your leaves. It, eats, it feeds on the leaves. But it disturbs, you know, the leaf growth. Yes. But the tuber, to keep on its growth. Okay. You know, it will, be a, it will have a stable growth. But um, on that one as well, you have to control some uh, fung fungi on sweet potato. Use copper oscorite, uh, death and M45. There are a lot of diseases that, are, that come in and go in the sweet potato production. Uh, so we look at uh, even uh, uh, some blights where usually they attack the, the, the leaf spots. Yeah, they come in as leaf, leaf spots, so we need to control that as well. Okay. Then on, on the pongwe, pongwe is the major. It affects the whole system of the crop. It affects the, the vine, which is the, the vine. It, it, has, it affects the, which is the crop, the, the leaf crop, yes. the leaf. It affects the vine, it affects the tuber. As well. So the, the, most, the other important thing to control pongwe is to keep your ground moist. Okay. But the usual pongwe stays outside. Okay. But it, it, penetra it penetrates through the, the, the cracks of when the sweet potato is growing, that's when the Pongue, ground expands yeah, and yeah, cracks are yeah, formed. Yeah, sure. When, when cracks are formed, that's when pongwe enters into the into into the tuber and attacks the tuber. Yeah, and attacks. You will be feeding on the tuber. Okay. Then at the same time, that sweet potato which is damaged by pongwe, you you will not even like it anymore. <laughs> it won't be yeah. worth it yeah. to you know for yeah. our consumers yeah. or even for export. Sure. Yes. I'm uh, moving right along. Can we talk about yields expected? Tonnage Good. per hectare. If you Good. enter into sweet uh, potato production, mm -hmm. what are you looking at in terms of uh, yield? Because yield translates to uh, 
uh, your returns in mm -hmm. terms in for in uh, investment per dollar. Sure. Your returns are mainly focused on the yield. Mm -hmm. The yield is <coughs> where our returns emanate from. Mm -hmm. What do you expect as a farmer tonnage per hectare? Right, um, tonnage per, per hectare depends on how you supported your crop. Okay, but to uh, According roughly. to, yeah, roughly we're looking at about uh, not less than 30 tons per hectare. Okay. Uh, you can go above 60 tons depending on how you supported your crop. But uh, if you get 30 tons, then you make, you'll make it. Okay, you yeah. break even yeah. and break, you can you have a profit. If you get 15, then you break even. Okay. Then 20, 15 and above, that's a profit. Okay. But 30 times, we're talking of good monies. Yes. And looking at the cost of your production. <laughs> Given that, it yeah. is very, you know, yeah. a cheap crop to yeah, manage. Sure. Let us talk about, um, when you look at sweet, uh, sweet potato production, most of our Zimbabwean farmers are looking to get into it. But they might lack knowledge. They might lack the skills to handle this crop. Mm -hmm. When it comes to, you know, uh, harvesting time mm -hmm. or even post-harvest maintenance. Because mm -hmm. you understand that when you harvest, you put your crop even in storage. Mm -hmm. Is it a waste to go to the market, mm -hmm. be it a supermarket, be it your local markets, be it at the farm gate. Mm -hmm. Let us talk about uh, post-harvest maintenance and even the harvesting procedures okay. that are suitable so that your crop has a better shelf life. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I'll talk of the, how people sh uh, will harvest or should harvest the crop. It's like, you know, uh, you know people are used to use uh, you know, holes or buzzers to do the harvesting. It's good because, you know, people will maybe might, they might not have capacity to, do, to use uh, maybe a cattle drawn plow. Yes. Cattle drawn plow is, is one of the most uh, valuable asset for sweet potato, sweet potato uh, harvesting. Okay. Then uh, you can just uh, dig, you can just maybe spike your, your plow right on the center of the ridge, deep down. So the moment you, your cattle will be pulling the plow, the sweet will be coming out of the ground. Okay. Yeah. okay. But, if, but if, you, if, you, if, you, if you spike it it's shallow, they need to damage your sweet potato. It will cut them, it will yeah, bruise yeah, them. Yeah, it will bruise them. Okay. Yeah. When it comes to storage, we are, uh, before it goes to the market, the sweet potato is harvested, it is removed from the ground and stored. Storage, uh, most people in care losses, most mm -hmm. farmers in care losses mm -hmm. when it comes to storage, post-harvest maintenance. What are your sentiments when, uh, yeah. when it comes to storage? Uh, sweet potato needs a well-ventilated uh, storeroom. Once it's harvested, you can clean it for export market or even for the, for the supermarket, they need cleaned uh, sweet potato, but you need to have a, a good storeroom uh, with good ventilation. Okay. That's the most important thing. Then it, it can be kept for more than three, I mean, about three weeks to a month. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, Augustine. There you had it, viewers. We are talking of storage of the sweet potato uh, uh, crop when it comes to post-harvest maintenance and even just storage in general. Now, viewers, we're going to go on a short commercial break. It was a pleasure having you with us in this segment, Augustine. Thank you, Walter. Same yes. to you. Thank you so much. Stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you, Zimbabwe, for staying tuned to Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. We are still at it, talking about sweet potato production. I was with Augustine Maseura, who was taking us through the good agronomic practices and the various fundamentals that are involved in sweet potato production. At this point in time, I'm joined by Laureen Dewey. She is from Greenstone Foods. Laureen, thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Wazi. Yes. As we get into our discussion, this segment is mainly centered on marketing. Can you maybe introduce marketing of sweet potatoes, mainly focusing on certification? Sweet potato is a very versatile crop. From it, you can get a lot. Uh, you can have the leaves, you can have the fruits. You can just do so much with it. Now, you can market a sweet potato in the local market, regional and also international. However, the international market has expectations uh, from the produce that comes from different countries. So to meet these expectations, we need certificates. certificates. Yes. And these certificates, uh, they include, for example, the one which we're doing right now with these uh, sweet potatoes, the organic uh, certification. Uh, you also need the global gap, that is global uh, good agricultural practices certification. And also a social responsibility certificate, for example, SMETA, that says this produce was 
sourced well, the farmer was paid well, there was no uh, child labor used. Okay, uh, thank you so much. I understand that most of our Zimbabwean farmers who look to venture into sweet potato production are looking at it from an export point of view. They are also looking at it as an attractive venture and we know that exports usually come in with, uh, you know, good monies, good profits and they also speak to issues in our economy such as trade imbalance and even given that our current accounts at the moment might be in the negative but if we improve our exports we'll be able to address that now Lorraine uh, talking of uh, sweet potato production usually what are the expectations of our export markets what are they looking for for you to say before even if you go further to look for certification what requirements should you be able to meet personally as a farmer you'd say I think my crop will be suitable for export what are those Okay. Um, export has very strict expectations when it comes to produce, uh, like I mentioned earlier on. Uh, for example, uh, number one is record. Okay. records. Records keeping is very, very important. You have to show when you grew, when you planted the crop, when you harvested it, when you added something to it, when you weeded it and all that. Those records, they are very important. And these, they use for traceability okay. to say, this produce that I'm eating, this packet, I know that it was grown from uh, Wazanai farm and it was, even when they go through the records, it can even show them, okay, it was harvested by so-and-so, but so-and-so worked on the farm on this day to take this produce. So okay. they really look for, for they're really uh, into traceability. They have to trace the, uh, the produce back. And was it produced well, uh, not too much fertilizer was used. And in this instance, we're saying we are just doing uh, organic and with Organic, of course, there are some pesticides that are used and organic uh, uh, fertilizers, but that you have to uh, stick with the required or the ones listed in the certification to say this can be used. So now with uh, sweet potato production, with, uh, we work with uh, consultants and experts in, this, uh, in the organic uh, certification. So they are the ones who guide you. Uh, to say no this you can use this, this you, you cannot can't. use because on your own yes you can be taught you have to do this 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 but without a consultant and also a good ag ag uh, agronomist moving with you you may uh, rest or some way but uh, with these people with you you uh, get uh, good produce which is which meets the standards and expectations of the export market. Thank you so much, Laureen. I like that you uh, alluded to the fact of organic fertilizers, organic uh, methods of, uh, you know, producing sweet potatoes. I know that to an extent, this also speaks to cost reduction. Instead of purchasing those chemicals that might be very costly, organic speaks to cost reduction. Now, as we round off our segment, Laureen, let us talk about the importance of sweet potato production in Zimbabwe looking at our local farmers in our economy we have issues such as uh, in our society and our communities issues whereby people are looking for substitutes of starch mainly in our towns or even uh, in the rural areas you would find that someone would want uh, a breakfast without bread without a uh, starch in form of bread but as a country we are advocating for import substitution whereby we are importing wheat but there is a substitute when it comes to sweet potatoes the importance of sweet potato looking from socially to economically and even health eating habits your sentiments on that okay like i mentioned when i was starting uh, sweet potato is a very very versatile crop you can eat it in different ways but here in zim uh, we're used to eating sweet potato in one dimension way it's your boiled potato it's your boiled potato with your tanganda tea yeah. right there and this puts off a lot of people from consuming sweet even potato even kids exactly even kids so but we have to realize there's so much you can do with sweet potato because these days sweet potato is the in thing because of the health benefits a lot of people even in the export market they are realizing that no the irish potato that they're used to is not as healthy so now when you put when you have the sweet potato it's much more healthy especially this variety the beauregard um, the orange flesh it has more vitamin a and uh, it's got less starch when uh, when it comes to the um, ones watching their weights Wait. and stuff uh, it's also good for, for, for that and you can use it in different ways for example you can make chips uh, with it instead of potato chips you have sweet potato, potato chips cheese. and uh, you can also puree it uh, have uh, your sweet potato pie you have uh, different crisping it as well 
the leaves yes you can have your muriwo and you also dry it uh, for your mfushua you and that with dried uh, leaves you it extends the shelf life okay. you know and uh, this means that you're no longer getting wastage and without wastage it means you're actually saving up on money and uh, i my colleague did talk about uh, good agronomic uh, practices meaning to say if you do produce well you get good money and for a dollar used you get about two dollars fifty more out of that so if you save you reduce waste you can actually get um, a good profit and that's what everyone is in business for you want to get good profits to be sustainable thank you so much Lorraine. that was Lorraine here from any business venture you want to get profit out of it it was a pleasure having you with us today Lorraine. thank you Wazi. yes from, uh, from me, your host was Zanae Manyore and Mkoma Dani, Daniel Mrangan were behind the scenes. It was a pleasure having you join us on Agricultural New Directions, Agribusiness. Until next week, have yourselves a fabulous evening. Thank you for watching.